Hello, Liberty Enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel. In today's episode, we're diving into a lesser-known chapter of America's history and dismantling myths around the question, Who will build the roads? Focusing on the intriguing tale of the country's private turnpikes. Now, given the tremendous influence modern governments have on our transportation, one may be skeptical about the idea of privately built roads. But stick around, and you might just find that these turnpikes were more impactful than you could have imagined. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, so you never miss a trip back in time with us. From the late 18th century to the early 20th century, private enterprise took the lead in the development of roads in America. As many as 3,200 companies successfully financed, constructed, and operated their toll roads. Often seen as merely a prelude to canals and railroads, these turnpikes had a profound impact on both the physical landscape and the emerging economic system of the U.S. Private road building happened in waves, with three significant episodes. The turnpike era of the eastern states from 1792 to 1845, the plank road boom from 1847 to 1853, and the toll road expansion in the far west from 1850 to 1902. Now, let's tackle some common misconceptions about private turnpikes. Critics often argue that such endeavors since take time to be profitable, will not be invested by entrepreneurs, and would poorly managed. The reality, however, is far from it. While these private ventures rarely return direct profits, they played a critical role in attracting enough capital to significantly expand both the coverage and quality of the U.S. road system. Plus, these enterprises introduced the concept of merging modern corporation elements with non-monetary motivations such as use and esteem. Before the turnpike era, local governments were responsible for road building and maintenance, typically financed by a road labor tax. But these public roads often fell short in terms of quality, largely due to a lack of private owners who would directly benefit from or bear the loss of the road's condition. Inter-Private Enterprise The first U.S. private turnpike was chartered by Pennsylvania in 1792 and opened two years later. It spanned 62 miles between Philadelphia and Lancaster. Other states quickly recognized its potential and began chartering their own turnpikes. By 1800, 69 turnpike companies had been established, especially in Connecticut and New York, and by the end of the decade, nearly six times as many turnpikes were incorporated. But what makes these private turnpikes stand out? It was their efficiency and innovation. These turnpikes represented a cost-effective solution to the pressing need for better roads, as they were often able to construct and maintain roads at lower costs than their public counterparts. Furthermore, they paved the way for new methods of finance and organization that would prove crucial for the development of modern corporations. Despite the lack of direct profits and dividends, turnpikes provided immense indirect benefits. By facilitating movement and trade, turnpikes enhanced the prosperity of local merchants, farmers, landowners, and residents. As Thomas F. Gordon, a gazetteer, put it, everyone feels that he has been repaid for his expenditures and the improved value of his lands and the economy of business. This raises an important question. If the benefits of a turnpike were available to all and dividends were unlikely, why would anyone finance their construction? These communities had to grapple with a serious free rider problem. Despite this, hundreds of communities managed to overcome this issue, largely due to a civic-minded culture that valued investment for long-term community gain. According to Alexis de Tocqueville, apart from the South, Americans possessed a strong public spirit which drove the funding of schools, libraries, hospitals, churches, canals, dredging companies, wharves, and water companies, 
in addition to turnpikes. This strong sense of community emerged from the fertile ground of liberty, with every citizen reminded of their place in society and the common good. Tocqueville's testimonial, while broad and general, finds its accuracy in the archival records and local histories of the turnpike communities. Stockholder lists reveal a network of neighbors, kin, and local leaders voluntarily contributing to what they saw as a critical community improvement. Furthermore, many toll road projects were seen as a symbol of the community, with participation in these companies seen as a rewarding way of establishing public services. Such efforts were pursued for the sake of community romance and adventure as much as they were for dividends. Local community members were the primary investors, rather than external speculators, as they were in the best position to enjoy the indirect benefits of the turnpikes. Records reveal that most turnpike investors were ordinary households, including farmers and artisans. These investors were generally wealthier than the average citizen, but not part of the urban elite that dominated larger corporations. Turnpikes only became symbols of civic pride after enduring substantial controversy. In the early 19th century, Americans feared that turnpikes would abuse their power as engrossing monopolists, charging travelers excessively or exploiting eminent domain privileges. In response, lawmakers incorporated numerous restrictions into turnpike charters. Toll gates were often spaced no less than five or even ten miles apart. This enabled some users to travel without encountering a toll gate and ease the practice of shunpiking or evading toll gates. Despite the regulatory challenges and the apparent free rider problem, the success of early turnpikes in raising funds and improving roads was remarkable. They managed to build new roads at an unprecedented rate in America. Up until 1830, Turnpike companies in New England and the Middle Atlantic raised over $24 million, an amount equal to 6.15% of these states' 1830 GDP. To give some perspective, the construction of the interstate highway system, which cost $330 billion between. That's where we'll wrap up for today, folks. As we've seen, Private turnpikes played an instrumental role in shaping America's road system and corporate landscape. In our next video, we'll delve deeper into their fascinating history. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more incredible historical content. Until then, stay curious and keep exploring history.